A group of scientists will use the James Webb Space Telescope to search for Earth 2.0 and Jupiter-like exoplanets that are dispersed around the cosmos. Right after it was launched, the James Webb Space Telescope was able to identify indications of the presence of water on an extrasolar planet that was around 1,324 light years away from Earth. This planet, which is a gas giant and goes by the name WASP-17b, has an unusually close orbit around its star, which is the reason why a year on this planet lasts 3.7 days. Nicole K. Lewis, an astrophysicist at the Carl Sagan Institute at Cornell University, intends to take advantage of this aspect of the planet in order to do more in-depth research on it. According to a report produced by Cornell University, Lewis has been given a total of 130 hours of observational time to use in the course of his research into the several types of exoplanets that may be found throughout the cosmos. Aside from that, she is a member of a group that plans to observe specific exoplanets for a total of 200 to 300 hours. The exoplanets range in size from that of Jupiter to that of Earth. But even if her team is unsuccessful in making any important discoveries within the allotted amount of time, there are a lot of other teams waiting for their turn to use the telescope. The teams are chosen through the JWST Guaranteed Time Observations GTO, program that is run by NASA. This program guarantees that the observatory will be used for 16% of its total time during its first three cycles of operation. How likely is it that the James Webb Space Telescope will find another planet that is similar to Earth? According to the research published by Cornell, Lewis was quoted as saying that, by looking at different types of planets in different circumstances, we can start to tease out why they are the way they are. That can assist in constructing the context for possibly finding Earth 2.0 someday, one possible interpretation read. According to Lewis, the extrasolar planet WASP-17b is one of her favorites, and she and her colleagues want to examine the planet when it passes in front of its host star. In addition, they will measure the directly emerging light in order to investigate the chemistry of the planet. The spectrograph equipment developed by James Webb that separates light into its component spectrums would be used to analyze the light that is reflected from the planets. These spectra, which were picked up by the telescope, would contain the chemical fingerprints of molecules such as water, carbon dioxide, methane, and others. As Lewis noted, and we look for aerosols, which provide very unique signatures as a result of places on the planet and also at different wavelengths. This includes clouds and hazes. Because it is extraordinarily sensitive to infrared radiation, which cannot be seen but can be felt as heat, the Webb telescope is ideal for making discoveries of this kind because it was designed specifically for this purpose. Because planets shine so brilliantly in this particular wavelength of light, infrared is widely regarded as the method of choice for researching planetary systems. She went on to explain why the discovery of Earth 2.0 was so important by stating that it will provide answers to fundamental concerns, such as, how did we get here? Do we have no one else? Are there any other planets in the universe that are just like ours? In addition, the Chinese have plans to discover a new planet or a second Earth-like planet, not with the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST, but with their own telescope. Astronomers have not been successful in their search for a planet that is analogous to Earth and that orbits a star that is analogous to the Sun, despite the fact that multiple high-profile searches have been conducted. Now, the Chinese government is preparing to launch its very own space telescope in order to search for Earth 2.0. Some of the most fascinating findings in recent astronomical history were uncovered by the Kepler Space Telescope. Following its launch in 2009, the telescope continued to monitor 13 million different stars until 2018, when it was turned off. During this time period, Kepler uncovered the existence of around 2,600 planets that orbited other stars. 
it was necessary for astronomers to create two new categories of planets because some of them were completely incomparable to anything else in our solar system. There are one or two of Kepler's findings that orbit in the habitable zone of their parent star, albeit these planets orbit around red dwarf stars, which are much different from the Sun in many ways. This was quite exciting since the circumstances that are thought to be necessary for the creation of life can be found in a temperate location that can support the presence of liquid water. But despite all of that, Kepler was unsuccessful in the end. It was tasked with the objective of locating another Earth, or more specifically, a planet with similar characteristics to our own that orbited a Sun-like star. Kepler's observations, however, did not turn up a single planet that resembled Earth 2.0 in any way. This was due in part to the fact that Sun-like stars were found to be louder than had been anticipated, necessitating extended periods of observation. However, another reason for this is that in 2013, two of the observatory's four reaction wheels stopped working, which rendered long-term observations unfeasible. As a direct consequence of this, astronomers have not yet discovered another Earth-like planet. This might be about to change, as the Chinese government has announced plans to undertake a mission in 2026 named Earth 2.0. This mission will search the cosmos for planets similar to Earth that orbit stars similar to the Sun using sensors that have been specifically developed to deal with the unexpected discovery of stellar noise made by Kepler. About 300 scientists and engineers from over 40 different universities, the majority of which are located in China, are members of the team. In addition, a comprehensive description of the mission was provided by the collaboration this week via a publication on the Archive. One of the challenges that any space observatory must face is finding a way to cover as large of a field of view as they possibly can, while keeping the cost and weight of the spacecraft to a minimum. The Chinese group found a solution to this issue by utilizing multiple smaller telescopes rather than a single, massive one. Instead, the spacecraft will carry six smaller telescopes, each measuring 30 centimeters, which, when combined, will observe the same region of the sky that Kepler did with its 1.4 meter mirror. These telescopes are designed to search for the distinctive brightness shifts that occur in stars whenever a planet passes in front of them. In the event of a microlensing event, which occurs when the gravitational field of one star focuses the light of another, more distant star behind it, the light from the more distant star suddenly brightens. The spaceship will also carry a seventh telescope designed to look for these events. Astronomers are able to determine whether or not the star has a planet around it by analyzing the pattern of brightness. This seventh sensor will also have the capability to detect free-floating planets, which will assist in shedding some light on these peculiar and solitary objects. It is the intention of the Chinese team to send Earth 2.0 to the L2 Lagrange point, which is one of several locations in space where the gravitational fields of the Earth and Moon are in equilibrium, and which is also far away from the possibility of interference from Earth. L2 is a well-liked location for observatories and is currently and formally home to a number of them, including the Herschel Space Observatory and the James Webb Space Telescope, among others. During its four-year mission, the Earth 2.0 spacecraft will orbit L2 and transmit approximately 169 gigabytes worth of data each and every day. This opens the door to the possibility of some discoveries that will make your mouth water. The team believes that their transit survey will be able to identify approximately 29,000 new planets, including approximately 4,900 planets of a similar size to Earth, according to their simulations. This indicates that the expedition should identify between 10 and 20 Earth 2.0s by the year 2030. It is highly conceivable that the finding of Earth 2.0 will go down as one of the most important events in the annals of astronomical history. It is very possible that this will generate a significant amount of interest in the characteristics of these planets, including the composition of their atmospheres and the possibility that they contain water. After that comes the process of looking for biomarkers, 
which includes substances like methane and oxygen, as well as patterns of light absorption that are unique to photosynthesis, which are indicators of the presence of life. The next step will be to look for technological fingerprints, or technosignatures, that could point to the existence of an advanced civilization. These could include signals like industrial pollutants, like chlorofluorocarbons, or even narrowband radio transmissions. It should be noted that Earth 2.0 is not the only mission with the capability of locating an alternative Earth. A number of additional missions, such as the European Space Agency's Plato mission, which will also be launched in 2026, have the capability. But in order for these to be successful, they will need more good fortune than Earth 2.0. This marks the beginning of a new era in the research of potentially habitable planets and sets the stage for an exciting international race to uncover another Earth. What are your thoughts? Who will be the first to discover Earth 2.0? Who would win? The Chinese or the JWST? Or is it even possible that there is another Earth somewhere? Share your ideas with us in the corresponding comments section below. Thank you for watching this video until the end. Leave us a like and subscribe for more videos like this. With that being said, we have another great video for you. Click on the video on your screen and let us take you on another space adventure. See you there.